subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so that you know when live we go hello everyone welcome to today's dns session we are going to have a discussion on today's newspaper the hindu delhi edition dated 6 july 2021 We shall be taking up articles important for civil service examination and discuss them as per the demand of the exam. This is the article from page number seven, crafting a unique partnership with Africa. Recently, our external affairs minister on his visit to Kenya has tweeted, "A historical solidarity is today a modern partnership. Solidarity is unity in feeling, emotion, or ideas." The idea of solidarity between India and Africa is historical. We have ancient record of Indians living in the east coast of Africa and there are records in the modern and medieval times in the writings of the travelers. But the solidarity in the real sense began in the colonial era. This solidarity developed out of the political connection that was developed in the colonial era through the political career of Mahatma Gandhi that began in South Africa. Mahatma Gandhi established Indian Natal Congress in 1894. This connection of Mahatma Gandhi with the African continent helped develop the feeling of solidarity after independence. An independent India raised voice for the African liberation throughout the course of non-aligned movement. The issue of decolonization became the rallying point between India and Africa relation. This was strengthened through the Bandung Declaration of 1955. The Bandung Conference happened in Indonesia and 29 African and Asian nations met to decide upon the role of the third world country in development and specially decolonization. India as the member of G77 always have taken up the important issues concerning Africa and India throughout the non-aligned movement helped the process of decolonization in Africa. Even after their independence India has supported the African nations in their frustrations. with the hierarchical world order that subordinates the african nations in international decision making indian diaspora is an important community in african nations especially in kenya uganda mauritius and nigeria in fact in the recent tour to kenya external affairs minister interacted with indian diaspora in kenya and yes mauritius is also considered to be part of african continent so this feeling of solidarity trust and confidence has been building up and this has continued to the present time of covid-19 pandemic india stood with africa in this difficult time and india has supported the african nations by giving vaccines and ppp equipments and hence the external affairs minister has remarked that a historical solidarity is today a modern partnership in this modern partnership the article deals with the unique partnership that can develop in the area of agriculture So our discussion here is going to be confined in the area of agriculture. Although India's relation with African nation is multifaceted, multidimensional, it deals from infrastructure development, capacity building, soft loan, line of credit, knowledge sharing, supporting them on international fora, etc. But we shall discuss here the cooperation of India with African nations in the area of agriculture. This is an extremely relevant area of cooperation because 65% of world's uncultivated arable land is in africa 70% of african population is involved in agriculture and 20% of gdp especially in the sub saharan region comes from agriculture so agriculture is critical to india and more so agriculture is critical to africa's economy there is a need of congruence in india's cooperation with africa with the cooperation in agricultural sector and this congruence has been growing up india has done a lot in terms of capacity building in the area of agriculture India has built India Africa Institute of Agriculture and Rural Development in Malawi. In 2016, India has signed government to government pact with Mozambique. The pact is to help develop the production of pulses in Mozambique and also to buy back the produced pulses. In this way India is helping in the capacity building in Mozambique in the area of agriculture India is also helping Mozambique to develop climate smart agriculture in the changing scenario of climate change and in turn India's pulses demand will also be met as India will be importing the excess pulses produced in Mozambique in 2018 on his visit to Rwanda Prime Minister Modi gifted 200 cows to Rwandan government the government of Rwanda will be using these cows for a government run scheme This government to government pact between India and the government of Mozambique can also be seen as the case of contract farming or cooperative farming. 
This idea is not limited to government to government. Actually, many private bodies, many farmers, they are involved in acquisition of farmland in African nation. Indian farmers have purchased around 6 lakh hectares of land for commercial farming in Africa on the model of contract farming. There has been increased presence of Indian entrepreneurs in all areas of economy and also in the area of agriculture. Indian government of course gives soft loans, line of credits and machinery for the agricultural development in Africa. India is also involved in trilateral partnerships. For example, India is helping the cause of food security in Africa using IPSA fund. Here, Brazil is involved with India, apart from one of the African nations, South Africa, in developing the agriculture and ensuring food security in the African nation. Similarly, United States Agency for International Development and United Kingdom's Department for International Development has funded Supporting India's Trade Preference for Africa, SITA program. There has been very important partnership in the area of agriculture, Women to Women Partnership. India's NGO, Self-Employed Women's Association, has proven to be committed for sharing knowledge and models of development on female empowerment and self-reliance. SEVA has helped women farmers in Ghana. They have been taught to produce sia butter and women farmers in Ghana have built supply chain and is exporting around 200 tons of sia butter to Japan. Sub-national cooperation with Africa also has come up. For example, Kerala government has been trying to meet its steep requirement for raw cashew nuts which is around 8 lakh tons a year by importing it from African nations. Kerala's own production is only around 0.83 lakh tons. There is also a proposal to create a jointly owned brand of Africa Kullam Cashews. The knowledge sharing cooperation in the area of agriculture is huge as you can see through these examples. But the Chinese, after investing heavily in the field of infrastructure, they are getting now into agri-tech areas. Chinese interest has been in the African continent for long for the reason of mineral resources, for the reason of cheap labor, lax environmental laws, Many of the Chinese manufacturing units are now shifting to Africa. African nations also provide support to one China policy. But recently, Chinese engagement with the African nation now is also reaching to the area of agri-tech. For example, China has been using drone technology to control the infestation of fall armyworm in Zambia. Agriculture startups in the area of agri-tech is being supported by many IT companies of China. For example, in Uganda, Chinese have been helping to develop e-agriculture commerce platform. Chinese also have been developing agriculture technology demonstration centers. Chinese also have developed cooperation in the area of education and they obviously are doing it in a planned manner. Education will be required to decimate and help improve the uptake of technology. Without education, cooperation and linkages, it will be impossible for agriculture technology demonstration centers to work. India's knowledge sharing although is very deep, but this uplifting of knowledge sharing in agriculture and bringing it to the level of agri-tech is not up to the mark. We are not helping develop drone technology in agriculture. We are not helping in precision technology. We are not helping in other IT-enabled agriculture technology in Africa much. China has over 20 agriculture technology demonstration centers. Although we do have research and development centers in the field of agriculture, but they are not very extensive in the African continent. We also not have a planned strategy of linking the cooperation in education with agriculture and agri-tech. This is where we have to speed up because there is chance. There is increased negative perception of presence of China in Africa because they have an insular diaspora. The cooperation of local Chinese, the investors and even the local farmers is not very much with the local African farmers. There is lopsided trade. There is a threat of debt. There is increased competition with Chinese investment and startups coming up in Africa. All these are building negative perception of China and Chinese investment in general in economy and in particular in the agriculture sector. We have to fill this space because we already share solidarity with African continent. The mutual trust and respect for India is much more. Our IT sector is extremely strong. It is a natural progression that we have to do because we already have cooperation in agriculture to proceed to agri-tech. And in that sense, the author is talking about 
crafting a unique partnership with Africa because this cooperation in agriculture still remains uncrafted. This article is from page number 8. 12 MLAs suspended for a year from Maharashtra Assembly. This act and duty and responsibility can be fulfilled only with adequate amount of power. The speaker has been given adequate power for maintaining order in the house. That power is derived from the rules of procedure and conduct of businesses in the house. And that rule is made from the constitutional provision under Article 208. Article 208 is concerning the rules of procedure. The first clause of Article 208 reads like this. A house of the legislature of a state may make rules for regulating subject to the provisions of this constitution, its procedure and the conduct of its businesses. So a house of legislature of a state can make rules to conduct its procedure and businesses. Different state will have different rules to conduct procedures and businesses in the state legislature. So we will not go through the rule book of the state. Rather, we will see what is the rule for the procedure and the conduct of business in the Lok Sabha. And that will give you the glimpse and the broad contour that the state assembly will also follow. According to the rule number 373 of the rules of procedure and conduct of businesses of Lok Sabha, the speaker, if is of the opinion that the conduct of any member is grossly disorderly, may direct such member to withdraw immediately from the house and any member so ordered to withdraw shall remain absent during the remainder of the day's sitting. This is coming from Article 373. But for some members, such kind of punishment may not be too much of a deterrence. So there's a provision in the next rule number 374. Rule 374 says that if the speaker may, if deems it necessary, name a member who disregards the authority of the chair or is persistently and willfully obstructing the business of the house. The member who has already been named after passing of a motion from the house, from the Lok Sabha, can be suspended by the speaker. And this suspension will only be for the remainder of the session. Suspending an MP is a serious issue. When you suspend an MP, he or she will not be able to participate in the parliamentary procedure. That would mean that you are cancelling the representation of the whole constituency. In the representative democracy, that's a serious thing. So suspension of MPs is a very serious issue. And so is the suspension of MLAs. So in the rules of procedure and conduct of businesses for Lok Sabha, the speaker, after passing of the motion, can suspend an MP for the remainder of the session. And that suspension can come as per the Rule 374 after a motion in the House has been passed supporting the same. It is mentioned in Rule number 374 itself that at any time on a motion passed by the House, suspension can be terminated. Who suspends an MP? Speaker. Who terminates the suspension? The House terminates the suspension. Speaker cannot terminate the suspension. But in 2001, an amendment was made to the Rules of Procedure and Conduct of Businesses and Rule Number 374A was added. The purpose of adding Rule Number 374A was to do away with the need of adopting a motion so that the Speaker can on herself or himself do the suspension. Rule Number 374A reads like this. Notwithstanding anything contained in Rules 373 and 374, in the event of grave disorder occasioned by a member coming into the well of the house or abusing the rules of the house persistently and willfully obstructing its business, such member shall, on being named by the Speaker, stand automatically suspended from the services of the house for five consecutive sittings or the remainder of the session, whichever is less, provided that the House, at any time, on a motion being passed, terminate the suspension. So the power of the Speaker vis-a-vis -vis suspending an MP is this. The Speaker can suspend the MP by himself or herself without the need of a motion. But generally, it is seen that the Speaker do take help of the motion and take the majority opinion through the motion. So before suspension, a motion is introduced. On passing the motion, the speaker suspends the MP. 
there are two things here it is not necessary that the motion is called for for the suspension the speaker has all the power to suspend an mp just by naming the mp and there is no necessary requirement of a motion secondly the speaker can suspend an mp on his own or her own but the speaker cannot terminate the suspension the revocation of the member suspension has to be done by the house through a motion if you remember in march last year seven congress mps were suspended and the revocation of suspension was done by a resolution by lok sabha the speaker by himself or herself cannot cancel this suspension here we have seen that the speaker of the lok sabha can suspend mps for five consecutive sittings or remainder of the session whichever is less but in the headline in the newspaper you read that 12 mlas have been suspended for a year not remainder of the session because the rule book of lok sabha will not exactly match with the rule book of a state legislative assembly article 208 is regarding the rules of procedure of a state assembly the clause 2 of this article says until rules are made under clause 1 the rules of procedure and standing orders in force immediately before the commencement of this constitution with respect to the legislature for the corresponding province shall have effect in relation to the legislature of the state subject meaning the state legislature can have their own rule and until the time such rules have been made whatever rules for the procedure was established before the commencement of constitution in the earlier provinces that rule will follow now come to this question that was asked in the prelims examination of 2019 i want to discuss this second statement with you when a state legislature does not have a rule on a particular matter it follows the lok sabha rule on that matter as is evident from this present case the state legislature of maharashtra is not following the lok sabha rule and it is not a convention to follow the lok sabha rule by the state legislative assembly the rules for procedure and the conduct of businesses in state legislature can be at variance with the rules of procedure in lok sabha but of course that has to be within the contour of the constitutional provisions and has to conform to the principle of natural justice there is an article on page number 7 will a national judiciary work will the union government seems to be convinced that a national judiciary or all india judicial service is going to work in 2019 the union government came up with a consultative process for creation of all india judicial services but initially support was not very overwhelming only four states and two high courts supported it eight states rejected the proposal five suggested changes and there are 11 states and high courts that have not responded yet but the government is already in the process of finalizing a bill to establish an all india judicial service there will be open all india entrance examination and those who clear this exam will be appointed by high courts and the state governments but who will take the exam a union body will take the exam the plan is to conduct the all india judicial service exam for four zones east west north south but even so the central government is in the process of finalizing the bill this is just an idea still the idea very old the chief justice conference of 1961 63 65 they all favored the establishment of all india judicial service and the law commission's first 8th 11th 116th report has suggested the creation of the service but every time the proposal has met intense opposition we will look at the reason why it has been opposed but before that let's look at the constitutional provision concerning the issue clause 1 of article 233 says appointment of persons to be and the posting and promotion of district judges in any state shall be made by the governor of the state in consultation with the high court so the state governments will make appointments for subordinate judiciary but that has to be done in consultation with the high court in the consultation of the high court it is actually the opinion of the chief justice of the high court remember this fact for prelims examination article 233 of the constitution says that the appointment the service condition etc for the subordinate judge will be laid down by the state government but that has to be done in consultation with the high court in 1976 via 42nd constitutional amendment article 312 was amended and clause 1 was added to article 
empowering the parliament to make laws for the creation of one or more all india services so this all india service will include all india judicial service but clause 3 of article 312 places a restriction that such a service shall not include a post inferior to that of a district judge so this all india service if the constitutional provisions are going to remain as it is will be for post of district judge and above amendment also transferred entry 3 of list 2 meaning the state list to entry 11a of the list 3 meaning to concurrent list and this entry is administration of justice constitution and organization of all courts except the supreme court and high court this entry has been transferred from the state list to the concurrent list so the parliament now may enact law for administration of justice and organization of all subordinate courts this amendment of the constitution so far has escaped parliamentary scrutiny and more so the judicial scrutiny because even when the entry was transferred from the state list to concurrent list this has not been used by the union but when you have started drafting a bill for all india judicial service this will now be scrutinized additionally you must be aware for your prelims exam that raj sabha just has to pass a resolution by two third majority this resolution has to be on agreement of forming a new all india service and that will kick start the process of forming all india judicial service once raj sabha has passed this resolution then the parliament can amend article 233 and this amendment has to be done just by simple law by simple majority amending article 233 after passing of the resolution by raj sabha will not be considered a constitutional amendment under article 368 now let's come to the point of arguments against all india judicial service first and foremost as we have just discussed it will raise question on federalism what was the prerogative of the state will now become the prerogative of the union currently as you would be aware that the district judges and the subordinate judges they are appointed by the state government as we have talked about in consultation on the advice of the high court of the state so the administration of the subordinate judiciary that is in the hands of the state you are taking it away putting in the hands of the center this raises a question on the principle of federalism and basic structure doctrine of our constitution any process of creation of all india judicial service will have to pass the test of federalism all india judicial service will necessarily affect the promotional avenues of subordinate judiciary presently 50% of the posts for the district judges are to be filled by the promotion of subordinate judicial service by promotion from subordinate judicial services so state judicial service officers their prospect will be heard if the district judges are going to be appointed from all india judicial service then there's a big question of language barrier using the crpc and ipc provision state governments have made provision not only to allow the conduct of the proceedings in local language but also the records to be kept in local languages so a question is a person coming from all india judicial service how will he cope up with local language but the union government seems to be undeterred by this argument the argument is that even ias and ips officers they serve in the cadre overcoming the language barrier so all india judicial officers can also do the same consternation and reservation from the side of the state is also because of the state quotas many of the states in the state judicial services provide reservation but the thing is a community that may be regarded as obc by the state government may not be regarded as obc by the central government so how the question of reservation of those communities be resolved then the argument comes that the judicial delay is not coming from the level of district judge but rather the subordinate courts so all india judicial service as we have seen in the beginning is not going to have a post inferior to the district judge so this crucial question of judicial delay still will not be answered even if you have formed all india judicial service so what's the point of it then it is also suggested by some that the idea of forming all india judicial service will not pass the judicial scrutiny for separation of power in 2019 in the roger matthew versus south indian bank supreme court held that autonomous body should be established for oversight over all tribunals in that judgment supreme court said a crucial thing 
control of the tribunal by the executive undermines its independence tribunals perform judicial functions similar to the courts it has been held for long that the courts the judicial system the judicial process that should remain untouched by executive so a union body like upsc or perhaps in all likelihood upsc will conduct the exam for all india judicial service that means executive is involved in the process of judicial recruitment whether that will be acceptable to the supreme court or not is a big question mark but there are arguments in favor of forming all india judicial services as well presently there are approximately 5000 vacancies across the district judicial system and the subordinate judiciary in india the vacancies for the district judges will be fulfilled by all india judicial services secondly the law minister recently has been very enthusiastic about equal representation of the marginalized and deprived sections of the society in the judicial system just like reservation in other all india services reservation will be provided in all india judicial services as well but then such reservation is already there in force in many states for example tamil nadu provides a roster based reservation of 69% 30% of which are women uttar pradesh provides 20% reservation in judicial services so it is not that in the state judicial services marginalized sections are not represented but yes it will be made uniform and the states that have lower reservation in those states especially the marginalized section will be benefited but the government seems to be in a hurry in drafting a bill without proper consultation perhaps once the draft bill is finalized then it will be open up for public consultation but the government has not done a wider consultation and the law commission reports on which it is being based they are pretty old a new study is required to not only know the feasibility of all india judicial service but also the manner and the way in which it must be implemented 